are celebrating every win out here, even the small wins. If he doesn't reach this standard or exceed it, then uh, no thank you sir. I was going through the V most and I say that to say like, I'm so proud of having gone through those things. Welcome to another video. Can't believe I'm saying this. Can't believe I've been consistent enough to say this. Just a disclaimer, but I hate it when YouTubers feel like they, they've got to mention it, but I see why now, because the camera picks up every blooming flaw there is on a human being, and so I just wanna say, one, if you hear in the background, it's definitely not myself or my husband, it's definitely Zoe. Um, yeah, you see, that's Zoe. So I hate it when people on YouTubers actually say this, but I'm gonna be doing that right now. And that is, I'm so sorry, I've actually not got any makeup on today, but I do have lip balm for you guys. Do you know why? Because I have dry lips syndrome. It's been one of those days. Um, I've got my hair done, so it's a win, but yeah, let's begin. So welcome to a new video, Consistency Queen. I'm claiming it by the way, I know it's only the second video and I've been consistent for like two videos, but I am claiming it, okay? I'm celebrating every win out here, even the small wins. I thought that it only made sense, right, if I would do a about me video. I don't actually know what I'm going to title it yet, but it's going to be basically a quick overview of who I am. Because at the, at the end of the day, if you're watching my YouTube channel and you're watching my videos, you want to know who you're watching, right? And so yeah, we are gonna dive straight into it. I am Krupa Abrokwa, obviously, as you guys know. I was born in London into a family of first generation immigrants. So raised in an Indian traditional household. Um, Mum, dad, brother, and myself. Um, raised in a Hindu family, gave my life to Christ at 21 years of age. Um, you see, I don't know if I'm gonna get into it, that's the thing. Don't get into it early, Neil. No, I'm not gonna get into it in this video, but basically, long story short, just had a warped version of love, was looking for love and satisfaction in the wrong places, and the grace of God. God for that, um, saved me at the most perfect time in my life where I was like in the depths of, like depths basically. Um, and yeah, I gave my life to Christ at 21, haven't looked back since, although the journey has been, oh yeah, by the way, I'm playing with my clip. The journey has been something and I'm so looking forward to like sharing those little snippets with you guys because, um, well actually the main purpose of this channel is to create an environment of just speaking about what we all face as realities do you know what i mean i feel like one of the tactics of the devil is that he wants to isolate us in our experiences right to make it seem like oh my gosh nobody else knows how it feels or nobody else would have gone through something like this and actually that's so untrue if we would just be vulnerable and open enough to share um we will be able to diffuse that lie um, that often causes such a great trauma in our storms, right? Anyways, I'm not getting into the storms or not getting into the, the journey of Christianity, but all of that to say, I am so looking forward to speaking about it. Gave my life to Christ at 21, then what did I do? Oh yeah, I went to uni! Do you know what, this is gonna be really ironic, but my last video I was talking about how I wasn't able to film properly and I was apologizing about the exposure, but guess what? I have a first class degree in film, so I don't actually <laughs> know what I was studying. Uh, it's so funny because I didn't actually enjoy it at all. Um, but saying that I did like the editing part, but everything before then, <sighs> I feel like I still don't like it. I don't know why, but anyway. I didn't enjoy it, um, but I wanted to do something that I didn't quit, basically, because 
I was known to be a quitter. Anytime anything got so difficult, I was like, yeah, I quit. <laughs> I'm out. Peace out. Yeah, I just wanted to do something to prove to myself that I, Krupa Patel at the time, um, will be able to start something and then finish it. So that was quite cool, but I remember telling my lecturer, like, I hate film, and he was like, okay, so what are you doing here? <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, first class film degree over here does not know how to fix the exposure problem on her camera. So anyone watching from the course, help a sister out. So after I finished my film degree, I sensed that the Lord was calling me to put my expertise into the church. Now I can see that it was for a season. At the time, it definitely felt like I was pursuing a career in that. Anyway, so I knew I wanted to travel as well at the same time, just see the world, just, just to be able to explore things beyond London. I had a friend who I worked with a long time ago. I saw I contacted him on Facebook and I was like, here's, here's what I want to do, etc. And he was like, yeah, my, my mum's got school, you can come and work for me or for us. And then I went to this church, I spoke to them about this experience that I was going to go and have. And then they were like, no, like things are dodgy out there. Like you want to be careful. And I was like, yeah, I know him. Anyway, so she was like, I know a pastor um, in Peru who can call this guy and find out if, if it's all legit. So the pastor is now called, the pastor which is now my dear papi, but basically he called and this guy was like, well she doesn't trust us and she should have come, blah, blah blah blah, and he's just getting really defensive about it, which was obviously red flags for myself and for papi as well. And actually in some senses I just didn't feel right to go and teach in Peru because I don't have a teaching qualification. If I was to put my child in a school that had a teacher with no teaching qualifications, I will be very worried. And so I didn't have, I didn't completely sell out on the idea of going there as a teacher, but anyway, I just wanted to have the experience, I guess, selfish of me. So then the pastor was like, oh, well, I, we actually need a, a communications person, basically. So if she wants to come and work here, I'll be more than happy to host her and give her a, a salary. And I was like, score, this is amazing. And so I worked there for like six months and it was the best thing I could have ever done. Yeah, it was literally life changing in the sense where it's like, I learned so many different values that I wanted to see in my future, but I didn't quite know before then that this is what I wanted. As in like, I couldn't put, I couldn't put the description to what my desires were until I had seen it in person. One of the things was like Bappy, for example. I knew I wanted an amazing husband, but never had the um, role model image to 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 describe, if that makes sense. And so, yeah, Bappy was definitely that kind of standard in which I was like, yeah, if he doesn't reach this standard or exceed it, then uh, no thank you, sir. But like I said, comment down below if that's something that you're interested in, I would love to talk about Peru. Any chance that I get to talk about Peru, I am here for it. <laughs> My memory card was full, and now this thing is trying to mess with my feelings. So yeah, Peru, amazing, great. By the way, I just want you to know, if you see a droplet of sweat coming from my hair or my eyes, <laughs> it's because I'm currently in Ghana with the windows closed no AC or fan because obviously this picks up every sound and so I am um, boiling. Yeah, so basically I came back to London, not sure what I was gonna do next, not sure what kind of career I was gonna pursue. And then I had a friend at the time that was like really enjoying her course, learning so many things, just being so enlightened by the things that she was learning about her faith while studying theology at Cambridge. And I was like, I would love me some of that actually. And you know what, I, up until that point, I didn't even know that there were such courses out there that teaches you about like your faith, your bi the Bible, like to just dive into the Bible, I had no idea. So when she told me about it, I was like, oh my gosh, amazing. Um, so I signed up for it. But truth be told, it was always a situation of like me not knowing what was next for me and that is why I was doing that because I was like, do you know what, 
I don't know what's next for me. I'm kind of interested in this, so let me see if this does further spark any interest in my life, you know? So, I ended up in Cambridge next um, after a series of interviews, and then the best thing happened to me, and the worst thing actually. During that period of Cambridge, or like applying for it and then and then getting into Cambridge was the worst. I was going through the most. And I say that to say like, I'm so proud of having gone through those things because I'm now who I am because of those things. And I know this is so cheesy, everyone says that, it's so cliche, but it's so bloody true. Like the Bible says, you know, these storms or like, life's challenges come to come to tune us right in, in the character that god has destined us to be and so i'm like bro i totally see that that is so true so yeah so i ended up in cambridge and then the best thing happened so the worst thing and then the best thing happened was that i met my husband so i was in the pool of like mostly white people that have just never seen the life that I've lived, you know, and, and vice versa, I've never experienced the life that they've lived. And so, um, and so I was just like, like, I, I hope I'm not offending anyone, but I was like, what am I gonna do when it's time to have difficult conversations around faith, around these people? I'm like, bro, we have different life experiences. Like, there's no one here that I can talk to to say like, hey like what did you think about this conversation that we had it was tough right do you know what i mean so i was preempting all these things and then leslie walks through the door and i was like not in terms of attraction but in terms of like i mean he's he's a beautiful man but i mean i was just like oh my gosh we're not the same people obviously i am definitely not african but i am so happy like there's another guy that's gonna experience what i'm gonna experience and we both can talk about it. She's crazy. No, she's not crazy. She's crazy in love with the screaming. But yeah, Leslie walked through the door and I was like, damn, this is so good. Like, I'm so pleased. But at the time, I kid you not, I was not attracted to him, nor was he attracted to me. But we were just, I don't know if he was actually equally as happy as I was, but I remember being ecstatic about the fact that he was there. Then yeah, Leslie and I got married within um, five months of knowing each other. So we got engaged at three months, married at five months. And then since then, it's just been a whole load of blessings and learning curves and growth and, and, and just, yeah, just a whole load of learning and growth basically. But I would definitely say that marriage is one of the best relationships but the hardest as well. Um, and this is something else so excited to talk about. Basically, I feel like I'm just excited to talk about everything because uh, I've said that about every stage of my life. <laughs> but I really am. So then, yeah, we were married for three years and then we found out we're pregnant with our baby Zoe, who is just the cutest little button and there it is um, and I love her I love her socks so we found out we're pregnant with Zuri but then at the same time we found that the Lord was calling us to Ghana so both things happened together twins though like they're legit they legit look like each other um so i'm guessing that they've got this like special chemistry and it's just so cute if it wasn't so painful and the journey of motherhood wasn't so like oh, i don't even know the words to describe the mother of the i mean you see the journey of motherhood but if i could do it without pain and the pain of growth i would give them a but I am stopping at two. The shop is closed after this one is out. The shop is closed. 
So yeah, moved to Ghana whilst being three months pregnant and that, my friends, <laughs> was a journey. We stayed with a relative when we came to Ghana um, at the back of her compound basically um, and it was something that Leslie had invested in some years ago as well so uh, it was like his own too which was nice. Anyway, that was a situation pretty tough but I'm so happy, I'm so pleased that we went through that. Because um, like I said, all of these things just had refined me in ways that I didn't know I needed refining in. So glad we're not still dealing with those kind of seasons. Thank you, oh Lord. So what else, what else? Yeah, and now here we are living in Ghana with our second baby to come. We did have Zoe here, and we will be having baby number two here too. Yeah, and our family is thriving. We're living in Africa and we're not murdered. We're not malnourished. We're not, you know, robbed. And yeah, so Africa isn't as scary as some people think it is. But I would love to, do you see, I'm saying this about every stage of my life, but I'd love to talk about that. And I'm going to be bringing content about like motherhood, about our move to Ghana, what it's like to be not down here living in Ghana and I'd love to talk about marriage, relationships, just everything in light and, and my journey with Christ but just like everything in light of faith because like I said in my previous video check it out if you haven't but everything in my life is centered around faith so it's just not authentic of me not to have that integrated into my content right so Hence why I, Krupa Abrokwa, hereby declare that I am calling myself a faith-based content creator. Yeah, I am done, basically. I definitely need to work on my outro, right? But I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Yeah, so this consistency cream is out. It's going to be really awkward if I miss a day of releasing because then the title is just not really it really, right? So this is going to keep me accountable to doing videos when I can, but hopefully I will still keep my title consistency queen, seeing that the second video out is on time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.